Hey guys, welcome to Digital Srini channel on YouTube and please pause the video and hit the subscribe button right now. In the last video we looked at, uh, we walked through the paper, the original paper for single image super resolution, SR GAN, if you want to call that. And in this video, let's focus a bit more on using it or, uh, or implementing it in Keras. I have already written the code, well, partially borrowed from someone, uh, you know, from multiple sources online. And I put together something that makes the most logical sense, uh, you know, from at least my point of view. So let's do that. But again, I encourage you to watch the video from last week. So uh, what we are going to do this week makes a little bit more sense. For those of you lazy people like me who want to watch my last week's video a bit later, let me quickly cover a few highlights. And if uh, you have already watched it, please feel free to forward this a few seconds to see where we actually start the coding part, okay? So I'm not gonna uh, waste your time by going through every detail that we talked about uh, in the last, uh, last video. So this is the paper we are going to implement. And uh, part of these, again, the key aspects here, I'll literally highlight a couple of key aspects. Basically, the loss function is uh, an important aspect. The architecture we're going to see in a second. The loss function, they're going to use perceptual loss function, which is a combination of two losses. One is uh, content loss, the other one adversarial loss. In fact, the content loss is the primary contributor and the adversarial loss is one, uh, one over 1000 of your content loss. You see the weight of content loss is one, the weight of adversarial loss is one uh, over uh, 1000. There's very little contribution, but there is some contribution from this adversarial loss. And adversarial loss is the typical GAN loss in a way uh, that we are used to. But if you look down here, it uh, looks like this is almost uh, binary cross entropy. Okay, uh, Binary cross entropy that you use as part of your, for example, binary classification, which is what our discriminator is. And uh, content loss is uh, they are using VGG loss as content loss and VGG network. And uh, the whole point is, let me, the whole point is that, okay, if you use a VGG network that has been trained on millions of images, for example, on ImageNet dataset, and then you extract the features, it's almost like it has seen everything when it comes to images. So now it's good at telling us or quantifying the, from a perceptual point of view, you know, how good our images are. So that's the whole point of using this VGG loss here. And uh, to quantify that, they're using a Euclidean distance between the feature representations of reconstructed image and the reference image. So you have your feature representation, not just the pixel space. You convert them into feature space by applying VGG. And then you are looking at the difference between these two. And for that, you can use a metric like mean squared error. But the key here is extracting the features. Okay, we are going to use uh, VGG up to the 10 layers. So we are going to take uh, up to the end of our uh, block three con four. Okay, uh, and uh, let's see, uh, the generator network, again, uh, generator network is based on ResNet residual blocks and you have a single residual block right there uh, represented. You have convolution, batch normalization, p relu, and so on. So we defined a residual block and uh, we defined an upscaling block right there so we can follow whatever they mentioned in the paper and implement that right here. In the paper they mentioned they are using 16 residual blocks so we are repeating that 16 times down here, right around here, and then everything else is self-explanatory. Same with discriminator. We are basically uh, doing everything that they mentioned as part of the paper. So the first, you don't have the batch normalization. Then you have all of these blocks with batch normalizations and alternating uh, stride one and stride two. As you can see, that's why we are alternating stride one and stride two. And finally, the output is a binary output right there. And uh, for our combined model, again, we are generating, there are two outputs, right? There are two inputs, which is your low resolution input image, high resolution image. There are two outputs. One output is what the discriminator model is basically giving us. So when you, supp uh, when you supply a uh, generated image or fake image that our generator uh, you know, generated as an input to your discriminator model, the output is going to be either true or false, right? I mean, either class one or class two or fake or real, if you want to call that. So we're going to take that and then uh, compare that with our uh, original ID. And this is what we are calling adversarial loss. And here we have a content loss. 
which is our VGG19. So that's exactly what we are doing right here when we are uh, training. I think this uh, this should provide enough uh, enough background. So let's go ahead and jump into the code and get started. Okay, uh, let us start by first looking at the data set because obviously you need a data set to work with. And for that, I'm going to provide this link as part of the description. And when you click on that, it takes you to this page, MIR Flickr download. This apparently is, uh, uh, I mean, this is basically 25,000 images. And, uh, 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 and and the images come in different sizes, um, I should say. So, but these are 25,000 images that you can download and this is approximately three gigabytes or so. So I have downloaded that and I extracted it and what you see would be right there, original images and I have 25,000 as you can see down here. And as you can see, they are all different sizes. So this one is, 500 by 500, this one is 500 by 316 and so on. So we have to first do some sort of a, uh, some sort of a uh, data handling. So uh, what I have done is I have, uh, by the way, I took these images and then I resized them into low resolution and high resolution images. So if you look at my high resolution images, you see they're all square because I resized them into 128. Why 128? I wish I had enough memory and uh, enough time to uh, to actually do 256 or even 512, but GANs are so time consuming. These are very slow and uh, it takes it takes weeks of training to actually get like the type of images that uh, that you see in these publications so i for now i wanted to stick with 128 by 128 even then i don't think i have enough resources and um, uh, time to actually use all 25000 i believe i ended up using 5000 of these just to make sure uh, we have something uh, i have something to show you as part of this video and uh, those HR images, first I uh, resized all, all of these images, all of these original images into 128 by 128, and then resized that even uh, further down into 32 by 32, mimicking the low resolution images, right? I mean, so what is 32 by 32? So let's go ahead and open this data set. And if I zoom in, this is what we are saying. That's not clear at all. So this is a low resolution image that we are trying to get to high resolution. Okay, with that information, how did I, I'll probably also share this code with you. Uh, I have a prepared data set right there. All I'm doing is, like I said, uh, take original images, resize them into 128 by 128 and resize them into 32 by 32 and save them into HR and LR images. This is just a few lines of code. I'm pretty sure you can write it your, uh, yourself. Okay, so now we have our data ready and let's get into our actual uh, uh, program. So let's start by running these lines. I believe I have already done that, so I don't waste your time uh, during this uh, uh, video recording. So these are all the libraries. And again, I don't think there is anything anything uh, new here that uh, I should mention. So they're all pretty much uh, the standard. So from Keras, we are importing. Uh, the only thing I should probably mention is from Keras.layers, normally we import ReLU uh, or leaky ReLU which we have done because our discriminator requires leaky relu, but our generator uses p relu, so I just uh, imported that. Otherwise, batch normalization, flattening, con2d, everything is pretty much standard. Okay, moving down, we already saw this as part of the presentation uh, earlier. So we have a resonant, uh, residual block and we have a upscaling block. We are using these two to put together our generator. And again, this generator is following exactly the same uh, you know, guidelines uh, as, uh, uh, as uh, described in the publication. And similarly, we are defining our discriminator block. Again, I'm going through this a bit fast because I spent time last week uh, you know, and also earlier uh, just quickly going through this code. Uh, so our discriminator block and our discriminator block repeats and every alternate one is tried to, as we saw earlier. And finally, what it gives out is uh, 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 one output, uh, right? I mean, that's what our discriminator does, one output, which means it's a binary, uh, binary classification. So now we need to look at our VGG19. Again, I showed you the code earlier. So from Keras.applications, we are importing VGG19 so we can build our VGG. And do not forget to include the weights. This is the whole point. Without the weights, it's just random initialization of your weights and then it's not the features that uh, you want because what you want is uh, basically something that has been trained on millions of images so it knows 
uh, what features are in a way. <laughs> so uh, our weights are ImageNet and we are not going to include the top because we are not using it for classification. So just for uh, just for uh, feature extraction, which means because you did not include the fall, uh, uh, top, you can uh, uh, provide any input shape. That, I hope you know this, otherwise you are restricted to using 224 by 224. Remember that restriction comes from the dense layers and not from the convolutional layers. Convolutional layers, you can just, you can just uh, change your input. So there's your uh, VGG and what this outputs is basically up to uh, layer 10, which was our block three and the last convolutional layer. So this is these are the features that we're going to use. And now you're creating a combined model or a compound model, if you want to call that, where our generator is uh, generating a fake high resolution image, which gets used as input to your discriminator. So the discriminator gives you an output by saying, is this, uh, is this real or fake? And that output is what we are using uh, uh, to track or to minimize our loss function. The other one that we are using is generated features, the VGG features, and that's the second uh, output right there. And these two are our inputs. Moving down, now we are uh, ready to go ahead and load the data set. So I have, uh, uh, a, uh, I have a data set of 25,000 images, but again, like I said, the training is extremely slow. Even with 5,000 images, each epoch was taking on my system with GPU, uh, uh, you know, 16 GB GPU, each epoch was taking about uh, 15 to 20 minutes. So I just did 10 epochs and let's see how the results look like. And uh, uh, definitely the more the better because the more training means more balance between generator and discriminator, right? So that's, that's always good with GAN. So let's go ahead and uh, in fact, I have already imported these. So for, uh, uh, let's load lower resolution images. And uh, also, uh, uh, I mean, since I'm using OpenCV, I'm converting our images from BGR to RGB. As you probably know, OpenCV reads images as BGR. So if you want uh, for display purposes, uh, it, may, it, it puts everything in the right colors. That's exactly what I'm doing there. And same with uh, high resolution images, convert them into NumPy array. And uh, if you want, we can plot a couple of these images and have a quick look. There you go. And let's do one more. There you go. So that's our low resolution image. That's our high resolution image. The hope is with our training, we can go from here to there. Yeah, not an easy thing. Some of these details, uh, the, it's, it's very hard to uh, restore. Okay, so these are some of the images from our data set that we have used for training. Now, these images are all 8-bit, so values go from 0 to 255, so the best way to scale is just divide by 255 right there. Uh, let me quickly check something. Where is our generator? Where is our generator? Uh, ta -da -ta -ta generator right there, and uh, discriminator, sigmoid. Okay, I just, uh, I just wanted to, I should have checked this earlier, I just wanted to make sure we are not using 10H. Uh, if so, you have to uh, you have to rescale your images to between minus one to one because you'll be generating data between minus one to one. So uh, we're good for now. Just a late thought that I got. And now that we have our low resolution, high resolution images, you can go ahead and split them into training and testing data sets. So you can obviously always test it with test uh, uh, images. And uh, we are getting the data ready for our, uh, you know, by reshaping it, them, uh, basically getting the shape of our uh, low resolution, high resolution images so we can provide them as input to our generators and discriminators. So that's all uh, this part right there. And uh, I think one uh, for discriminator, you see uh, we are using binary cross entropy because this is a binary classification problem and metrics are uh, accuracy. Now let's keep going down our input, uh, for VGG, we are extracting features for high resolution images, right? So what are we doing with VGG? We are comparing the features from our actual high resolution image that went through the VGG features and then extracted features. You keep them aside and now take the fake image 
extract the features and now you compare these two that's exactly what we are doing that's why the input to your vgg would be our whatever the size of our high resolution would be which is 128 by 128 by 3 and everything else is straightforward so we are creating a gan model by using the combined model right there and uh, down here we are actually combining compiling the gan using binary cross entropy right there yeah why binary cross entropy because the first thing that we are actually tracking is if i can find my combined model somewhere i may have to go is validity right there yeah which is basically the output of your discriminator so for that binary cross entropy is great and for the generated features which is vgg i believe we already mentioned uh, we'll be using mean squared error right there so that's the second one and also how are these weighted so the binary the first part the actual uh, discriminator part is only weighted one over 1000 but the mean squared error the feature space you know that that part uh, the vgg uh, feature uh, part would be weighted one so that's uh, our GAN summary and then uh, let's define a batch size of one so we can train it uh, one image at a time you can you can try 10 images at a time but typically when it comes to generating images I read in a couple of papers already that uh, batch size equals to one gives you the best results uh, okay and uh, we are just training them uh, we are creating batches right here because uh, for our image, uh, you know, for our training, we need to supply batches of images. So if your batch size is 10, provide 10 uh, low resolution or 10, and 10 high resolution images. That's exactly what this function actually does. It creates a, an array or a, of 10 images at a time and it supplies that to our uh, training down here. So I uh, defined my epochs as five. I mean, I did 10 epochs, uh, you know, literally yesterday. And uh, it's been, it, it completed today so we'll see uh, well uh, it took it took uh, uh, like I said uh, about 15 to 20 minutes per epoch so 200 minutes uh, per uh, you know for my 10 uh, epochs over there okay so for each of those epochs I'm uh, labeling my fake labels as zero real labels as one which is what we do for discriminator and then I'm creating an empty list to capture the losses as we train each epoch for generator and discriminator so we can summarize this at the end of each epoch now let's go through each batch meaning each image in our example each of these 5000 let's go through them and then uh, and then uh, supply those image images to our first of all supply the low resolution image to our generator so it can predict on it which is nothing but our fake image so give this fake image as an input to the discriminator and use the real input to the discriminator and then now you have two losses you can average these two which is what we have done right there so we can report it for every epoch okay so there you go and then we are setting the discriminator as non-trainable because we want to train generator by holding the discriminator constant so that's exactly what we are doing here to train the generator we need two things we need well we need four things two inputs two outputs uh, the way we defined two inputs are our low resolution and high resolution images and two outputs are our real label and our features that we just generated so we need to generate those features by using vgg there you go and once you train this you get your generator loss and we are capturing the discriminator loss generator loss as part of our list at the end of each epoch we are averaging them and we are reporting them right here and here i'm saving them let me change this back to 10 i was experimenting so uh, change you uh, sorry save your model every 10 epochs and use it later on okay so I have done all of that so I can do the bottom part uh, right now let us uh, import these two libraries and let's clear everything that's here and first of all I saved as you can see I saved this as GAN E10 after 10 epochs so let's go ahead and load it I'm not compiling it we are not training it again so let's go ahead and do that and uh, let's just get our data sets x1 and x2 as our low resolution test data set high resolution test right so i'm now using the test data set so the training never saw these images so let's see how the results look like and uh, let's randomly pick one image out of these uh, how many ever images we have as part of our test so let's see x1 and x2 i have 1650 images and let's just pick um, a random image out of it 
and that is uh, that gives me my source and target images that obviously my generator I'm supplying the low resolution image which is my source image and it generates a high supposedly a high resolution image let's go ahead and plot them there you go and uh, that is not bad considering I trained this with 3350 images like I trained it on 5000 total images of which 20% went into uh, testing and the remaining 80% training which I believe is 3350 so 3350 images only and 10 epochs this is the result so if you really train this for two three days you would get uh, pretty impressive results uh, based on what I already see here uh, this is our original image low resolution this is what our super resolution this is what our output is and this is the original high resolution image so let's check this on a couple more images yeah that's a tough one to recreate right and something with some features yeah I mean better than uh, you can definitely see that it's better than the original pixelated image but it still is not where we want it to be uh, so out of curiosity I just took my own uh, my own uh, image I just Google searched for my name and the first thing I saw I cropped it and I kind of uh, saved them so I called it uh, in fact I just did that uh, uh, let's see no uh, I mean, I'll, I'll plot this in a minute anyway. So let's have a uh, low resolution, high resolution image, and I'm converting them into BGR to RGB. So it makes sense when we plot them, normalizing pixels and expanding the dimensions. So they are right dimensions to our network. And let's go ahead, generator.predict on my image. And let us plot them. So there you go that's the low resolution image that's the high resolution original image and this is somewhere in between again i wish i had time to train this for 100 epochs or so so just to see how much better this gets but just uh, even here something that's highly pixelated like this to getting to this point is pretty incredible i would say so in summary gans require a lot of data and a lot of training time but if you have the luxury of data and time you can do miracles uh, as you can see some proof on the screen so thank you guys again uh, for a lot of uh, your patience again lately these videos are going to 20 minutes to 30 minutes but i really appreciate your patience and uh, i really appreciate if you can even uh, hit the like button uh, why won't you like it you are here for 22 minutes with me so <laughs> uh, go ahead and do that uh, thanks again and let's meet in the next tutorial uh, covering a different topic thanks